Every day, across the vast plains of America's agricultural heartland, millions of tiny beans begin a journey that will end in kitchens, restaurants, factories, and fuel tanks. Soybeans may look simple, but they power one of the largest food and energy systems in the modern world. From cooking oil used in everyday meals, to biodiesel fueling trucks and machinery, soybean oil quietly touches nearly every part of American life. Today, we're taking you inside a super giant soybean oil factory, where America transforms millions of tons of soybeans into cooking oil and renewable fuel. Before we step into this massive industrial operation, don't forget to like this video, subscribe, and turn on the notification bell. Because what you're about to see is how one humble crop becomes a cornerstone of modern industry. Soybeans didn't always dominate American agriculture. Originally domesticated thousands of years ago, soybeans were introduced to the United States in the 18th century, but remained a minor crop for decades. It wasn't until the 20th century that soybeans began their rise. During World War II, global shortages of animal feed and vegetable oils forced American farmers and scientists to look for new solutions. Soybeans proved to be a perfect answer. Rich in protein and oil, they could be grown efficiently at scale. By the post-war era, soybeans had become one of America's most important crops. Today, the United States produces hundreds of millions of tons of soybeans each year, feeding both people and machines. The journey begins in the fields. Soybeans are planted across millions of acres, especially in the Midwest. After months of growth, the plants turn yellow and dry, signaling harvest time. Giant combine harvesters sweep across fields, cutting the plants and separating the beans from pods and stems in one continuous motion. Each machine can harvest thousands of bushels per day. Trucks line up at the edge of the fields, hauling freshly harvested soybeans to grain elevators and processing plants. During peak harvest, the movement of soybeans becomes a non-stop flow, day and night. Once inside the soybean oil factory, the scale becomes overwhelming. Mountains of beans arrive by truck, rail, and barge. Before processing begins, the soybeans are cleaned. Dust, stones, broken pods, and foreign material are removed using screens, air systems, and magnets. Clean beans then move into conditioning units, where they are heated slightly to make them easier to process. Next comes cracking and de-hulling. Massive rollers break the soybeans into pieces, and the outer hulls are separated. These hulls won't be wasted, they'll later become animal feed or industrial fiber. The cracked beans are then flattened into thin flakes using powerful roller mills. This step dramatically increases surface area, making oil extraction more efficient. Oil extraction is where the factory truly shows its industrial power. While some oil can be removed by mechanical pressing, most large plants rely on solvent extraction to maximize yield. The soybean flakes enter sealed extraction vessels, where a food-grade solvent washes through them, dissolving the oil. What emerges is a mixture of oil and solvent, along with defatted soybean flakes.
These flakes are dried and toasted, becoming soybean meal, a high-protein feed used to raise cattle, poultry, pigs, and fish. In fact, soybean meal is just as valuable as the oil itself, making this a dual-output industry. The oil-solvent mixture moves on to recovery systems, where the solvent is evaporated and reused. What remains is crude soybean oil, thick, dark, and not yet suitable for consumption. From here, the oil enters the refining process, a carefully controlled sequence of physical and chemical steps designed to turn crude oil into clean, neutral cooking oil. First, the oil is degummed to remove phospholipids that can cause cloudiness. Then it undergoes neutralization, where free fatty acids are removed. Next comes bleaching, where natural pigments are filtered out using special clays. Finally, the oil is deodorized under high heat and vacuum to eliminate odors and flavors. The result is clear, light-colored soybean oil. Stable, versatile, and ready for food production. This refined oil flows into storage tanks the size of buildings. From here, it is bottled for consumers, shipped in bulk to food manufacturers, or delivered to restaurants and fast food chains. Much of what Americans know simply as vegetable oil is in fact soybean oil. It fries french fries, bakes snacks, blends into margarine, mayonnaise, and countless processed foods. It's so common that most people never stop to ask where it comes from. But food is only part of the story. A growing portion of soybean oil is diverted into energy production. Through a process called transesterification, soybean oil is converted into biodiesel. This renewable fuel can power trucks, farm equipment, generators, and industrial machinery. Compared to petroleum diesel, biodiesel burns cleaner and reduces greenhouse gas emissions. In many states, soybean oil has become a strategic energy resource, supporting domestic fuel production and reducing reliance on fossil fuels. What makes the soybean oil industry truly remarkable is its efficiency. Almost nothing goes to waste. The oil feeds people and fuels engines. The meal feeds livestock. The hulls become feed or industrial materials. Even process heat and byproducts are reused within the plant. This closed loop system turns one crop into multiple essential products, supporting food security, energy independence, and rural economies. Behind the machines are thousands of workers, engineers, chemists, and logistics specialists. They monitor temperatures, pressures, solvent recovery rates, and oil quality around the clock. These plants operate 24 hours a day, processing thousands of tons of soybeans daily. Safety systems protect workers from solvents and high temperatures, while environmental controls ensure emissions and wastewater meet strict standards. The impact of these supergiant soybean oil factories extends far beyond their walls. They anchor farming communities, stabilize crop prices, and connect agriculture to global markets. Soybean oil produced in these facilities travels across the country and around the world, linking American farms to international food and fuel systems. Perhaps the most surprising thing about soybean oil is how invisible it is. It doesn't announce itself like gasoline or steel. It quietly appears in meals, engines, and products we use every day. Yet behind that quiet presence lies one of the most powerful industrial operations in the nation. If you enjoyed this deep dive into how America transforms soybeans into cooking oil and renewable energy, make sure to like, subscribe, and turn on the notification bell. We'll continue exploring the enormous systems that power modern life, one process at a time. Thanks for watching, and as always, stay curious.
From the fields of the American West to the beer breweries that supply millions of people every day, a quiet but powerful grain is at the heart of countless foods, beverages, and industries. Barley. Idaho alone is consistently the top barley producing state in the United States. Barley may not be as famous as corn or wheat, but the supergiant barley harvest is a mind-blowing operation of technology, farming experience, and precision logistics happening every single year in America. Today, we're going inside that world, how barley is grown, harvested, dried, stored, malted, and transformed into food and beer enjoyed across the globe. But before we dive in, Make sure you like, subscribe, and hit the bell icon so you never miss our next journey into the industries that build our lives. Now let's head into the fields. Barley is one of humanity's oldest crops, cultivated for more than 10,000 years. Ancient civilizations used it to make bread, porridge, and early forms of beer. The Egyptians worshipped it. The Vikings depended on it. European monks perfected brewing with it. When settlers came to North America, they brought barley with them, planting it wherever they settled. But it wasn't until the mid-1800s, when brewing industries expanded and cattle ranching rose in the West, that barley truly found its home in America. Today, barley is grown mostly in the northern and western states, where dry climates and cool nights produce premium grain, perfect for turning into malt for beer. Despite its critical role, U.S. barley acreage has fallen to historic lows in recent years because of changing beer demand and competition from other crops. But the barley that remains, especially in Idaho, Montana, and North Dakota, is among the highest quality in the world. Modern barley farming is less about quantity, and more about maximum quality. Barley planting begins early, much earlier than corn. In the northern plains and mountains, farmers head to the fields as soon as the snow melts and the soil reaches planting temperature. GPS-guided tractors pull high-precision air seeders planting seeds with perfect spacing. Malting barley requires nearly perfect kernels. Uniform size, low protein, correct moisture, while feed barley is more forgiving. A farmer's decision depends on soil, irrigation, climate, and market conditions. Because barley matures quickly, in about 90 days, timing is everything. If planting is too late, harvest runs into fall storms. Too early, frost damages seedlings. Throughout spring and early summer, barley grows into a sea of green stalks topped with awns, the spiky bristles that give barley its signature look. Drones scout fields from above, while onboard tractor computers measure soil nutrients and water needs. By midsummer, fields turn golden yellow, signaling that harvest is near. Harvest season typically arrives in July and August. Every farmer watches the fields constantly, measuring moisture with handheld testers. Ideal moisture for harvesting barley is around 12 to 14 percent, dry enough to store safely, but not so dry that kernels crack. When conditions are perfect, the race begins. Massive Class 9 combines roll into the fields, each costing as much as a luxury home. Their headers glide just above the soil, clipping stalks and feeding grain into the machinery. Every few minutes, the tank fills. But the combines never stop moving. Tractors with grain carts rush alongside them, collecting kernels on the go. 
Then those carts unload into semi-trucks waiting by the road. The ballet continues hour after hour, sometimes 24-7. as farmers push to finish before a single rainstorm can destroy a crop's market value. Viewed from above, it looks like a highly choreographed army. Machines crisscrossing fields in perfect formation, each movement planned for efficiency. Just in Idaho alone, more than 500,000 acres of barley can be harvested in a single season, keeping these machines running at full power. Freshly harvested barley often has slight moisture differences from one part of a field to another. Trucks haul grain to drying facilities, some located on the farm, others at giant commercial grain elevators. Dryers push heated air through tons of grain, reducing moisture to 11 to 12 percent. This prevents mold, insect damage, and spoilage. This ensures the barley remains stable, sometimes for many months, until buyers need it. Every kernel is valuable. Grain that is too small, cracked, or protein high will be diverted into the animal feed market. Only the top portion, the most uniform grains, continues onward to the next stage. To make beer, barley must be turned into malt, which begins at specialized malt houses. There, barley is. Dust, stones, and foreign seeds are removed by air screens, magnets, and vibratory sifters. Rollers separate kernels by diameter. Breweries demand absolute uniformity because uneven grain causes uneven flavor. Soaking triggers germination. Tiny roots begin to break through the husk, and enzymes inside the grain activate, converting starches into fermentable sugars. This is the birth of beer. The steeping tanks are enormous, vertical cylinders holding hundreds of tons of barley at a time. Water cycles in and out for two days, raising moisture inside each kernel. Barley spreads across vast germination floors. Controlled airflow and temperature keep sprouts growing slowly and evenly. Workers constantly turn the grains with giant mechanical rakes so roots don't tangle. Once germination reaches the right point, barley is heated in kilns to stop growth and dry the kernels once again. The longer the heat, the darker the malt, creating everything from pale lager malts to deep stout malts. What leaves the kiln is malt, the soul of beer. Thousands of breweries across the United States, from giant operations to tiny craft beer makers, depend on American malt barley grown in the West. Barley farming has become an advanced science. Even though the crop itself is ancient, its farming is becoming futuristic. If you loved exploring the hidden world of barley, make sure to like, subscribe, and turn on notifications so you never miss our next documentary into the mega industries shaping our planet. Thanks for watching, and as always, stay curious.